I can't lie, y'all. I, I love y'all big time. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I always appreciate the uh, engaging conversations that we have. I always appreciate when, when y'all bring out all these great points. I, I appreciate all the, the, the millions of questions from subscribers that we get. You should see our email right now. It's crazy. Um, thank y'all for everything that you do. For real. Um, now, today, well, today when I'm recording this, don't know if it's going to be today when you see this, but today um, the Ravens had a presser that it was supposed to feature uh, Lamar Jackson, Justin Houston, of course, John Harbaugh. He usually speaks at every single one, uh, but Lamar Jackson is apparently sick. Um, he said Harbaugh cleared it up from the jump. He said it's not COVID. Him and Bradley Bozeman are both sick, but he said it's not COVID because, you know, when, whenever you hear it, like nowadays, it's like. What happened to the common cold? <laughs> what happened? Like, I, f I feel like we don't even hear about people getting colds anymore. Everything is just, oh, <coughs> oh, somebody coughed. Oh, COVID. That's it. They got COVID. And it's, it's anyway. Um, so Lamar and Bradley Bozeman, no practice for them today. Uh, Harbaugh, in, in this presser, he seemed to be in much more of an upbeat mood. He, he was a lot happier. He was a lot more cheery. And I guess he's officially passed Miami, like officially. We still got to drop the vlog. So Harbaugh, I don't know if you subscribe to the YouTube channel or not. I don't know if you part of Team Keep It Clean or not. But we still got to drop that, that Ravens Dolphins vlog. So we got to all relive it at least one more time. One more time. But anyway, um, he talked about Le'Veon Bell. He said, Le'Veon Bell, he was great for us. Loved his work ethic, loved him around as a player, loved everything that he brought to the team, but just said right now it was more of a numbers game. More of a numbers game. Now, he did also talk about how Le'Veon Bell has the chance. Hey, they, they want him to come back. He said it's, not, it's a possibility that Le'Veon Bell comes back. But then he also said that, uh, that Le'Veon Bell may also have other opportunities. And when he said that, I was like, ooh, okay. So I feel like that was him letting everybody know, like, hey, yeah, we wouldn't mind having him back. Wouldn't mind having him on the practice squad. But Le'Veon Bell is not a priority for us. I mean, obviously, he's not a priority to the Ravens because they cut him. Anybody who was a priority to the Ravens, they would not cut that player. And still, again, I'm, I'm, very, I was, I'm still very surprised that they actually did it. I'm very surprised because... You got to really put pride to the side and when, when you cut somebody like Le'Veon Bell, especially as the Ravens, whose running game has just been. And I mean, even with Le'Veon Bell, his, it just the, the fit wasn't there. This is not we don't have the offensive line for Le'Veon Bell to be Le'Veon Bell. I know people are, oh, he's washed. He's this. He's that. I, I don't think it's that. I just we're just not a good fit. Ravens were not a good fit. The offensive line ain't built like that. Like, like Lamar ain't got no time back there. And that's the quarterback. You think Le'Veon Bell going to have time back there as a runner? Man, get out of here. Anyway, um, he was asked about Calais Campbell. And I, I love this because it's true. Uh, he said, well, Calais Campbell, he feel like he never has to worry about him. With his play, uh, just with how when he's out there on the field, he's, he's always putting in work and always doing a good job. And he said he told Calais Campbell the other night, he said, I, I appreciate you. And I, I appreciate that. Uh, I really do. Uh, because you got to let people know that, man. It, it's, it's obviously, it goes beyond football. But you always got to let people know, like, hey, I appreciate you. Straight up. Because people, people need to know that. It's important. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said that uh, he was asked if he sees any Lamar Jackson in Justin Fields. And, oh, boy. You know, I'm glad that Harbaugh responded the way that he did to this. Because he said... He said he's his own quarterback, and he talked about the different things that he does well and whatnot and how they're going to have to try to defend it um, and how he, they, they're going to try to stop it. So I like that. I, I love that because so many times, oh, my goodness, so many times, it's like every single quarterback that can run just a little bit, anyone, if, if, if you can take, if, if your 40 time is higher than a 4.8, it's faster than a 4.8, then automatically all these media people, they say, oh, hey, hey. the next Lamar Jackson? The next, is, that the, is this the next Lamar Jackson? Is this, the, is this guy going to be better than Lamar Jackson? Is this guy going to be faster than Lamar Jackson? Is that it? Every single time. It's like, oh, my goodness. So, Harbaugh, good job. Good job. And I'm, I'm sure Harbaugh used to get asked that question so many times because he obviously 
is a coach of Lamar Jackson. So he's ha- had had every single question that there possibly can be about Lamar. So good job. And, and good job allowing Justin Fields to be Justin Fields. And leave it at that. I, I love that. Let him be his own quarterback. Let Lamar be his own quarterback. Let all these other quarterbacks that can run, let them be their own quarterbacks. Thank you. Then he also talks about how he expects the Bears to blitz based off of what they saw against the Dolphins. That's bait. That's bait. Let me tell you why that's bait. Because that's challenging the Bears to blitz. So this lets me know that the Ravens, and I, and I know some people like probably going to be like, man, you're putting too much stock into those guys, man. This lets me know that the Ravens will be prepared for it this week. This lets me know that, that they will be prepared for it. I know that's a lot. I, I know it's like, what? You think the right, these guys that can't adjust, what? what? You, Giro, what? That lets me know he's baiting them. He's baiting the Bears. And the Bears, you, I mean, you know they're going to take some of that bait because they saw what happened last week and they're like, oh my goodness. Dolphins, they, they kept these Ravens, the whole offense in check the whole game. And if it wasn't for some terrible calls, the Ravens wouldn't have gotten not one touchdown. Not one touchdown. Hmm. What is, I'm, I'm trying to think, I, I, has there ever been, has there ever been a game where Lamar has not scored a touchdown? Where the Ravens offense under Lamar Jackson has not scored a touchdown? Has there ever been one? I'm, I'm really trying, uh, anyway, I can't, if, y'all, if y'all can remember any, please let me know. I can't think of any off the top of my head. But have, have they? Oh, I don't know. That would be crazy. Anyway, Mark Andrews. Now, this, this, this part I really like. because it, it, Anyway, Mark Andrews. He was asked how quickly it took him to put away Thursday night. Of course, that beat down by the Dolphins. Uh, he said that losing sucks. Well, hey, I think we could all agree on that one, man. Uh, but he said that uh, the next day they were watching film and looking for ways to, to fix everything. Understood. But this was my favorite part right here. He was asked about going no huddle and, and doing a lot more up-tempo a bit earlier in games instead of doing it so late. And when the reporter asked him about it, he got, like, giddy about it. He started, like, smiling, and he, he was like, oh, yeah, that, that would be nice. That would be cool. But then he was like, but we have full confidence in Greg Roman, and he's been doing a good job, a great job, actually. So when he was asked about moving up-tempo and moving faster early on in games, he got excited. He got had like you could see the the joy that he was really trying to hold back. You could please if you didn't watch it, please watch the interview for yourself. But you could see like this dude was he, it made him excited and it really made him happy inside. Like oh man, I, I wish we could do that. He didn't say it, but you could tell by his face like oh man, I, I, I would love that. But then he reeled it in and he was like, but we have full confidence in Greg Roman. He's been doing a great job. So because if he would have said like. Oh, yeah, I wish we would do more up-tempo. I wish we would run more uh, a quicker pace offense early on in games. Of course I wish we would do that. That could be seen as a shot at Greg Roman. And you don't want to be seen taking shots at Greg Roman, the guy that has helped you get that bread. <laughs> I mean, he's Mark Andrews probably without Greg. He's, if we had a different offensive corner, he probably still would have ate anyway. But still. You, you don't want to be that player to take the shots, especially with the local media. Because you know they, they you know they waiting for something. They wait for anything. You say the wrong thing, you look the wrong way, oh, boom, it's a story. So Mark Andrews, he reeled that in really fast. So shout out to his PR squad because they have him. They got him right. Justin Houston was up next. And we know with Justin Houston, he said it way earlier in the season. Uh, it might have even been before the season. He talked about when he gets his 100th sack, he said what he, he said he don't even want the football. He said he don't, don't even want the football. He said what he wants is the quarterback's jersey who he gets the sack on. And that ended up being Jacoby Brissett. And he said they did exchange jerseys after the game. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. Shout out to Jacoby Brissett. He said Jacoby Brissett is doing good. He's all right. Uh, he said that when he sacked him, he didn't even realize that he was hurt. He said um, one of the rookies ended up um, like twisting Jacoby Brissett's leg on accident. Obviously not intentionally, but he said it was one of the rookies that ended up doing that. Um, I'm not sure which rookie. I would have to look at the replay of the play, but don't really want to look at anything from that game at all anymore. Um, barely could even watch the vlog that we had made, but 
that'll be out over the next couple of days. So again, like I said, we we all will we'll relive it one more time together. Uh, but then after that, we'll put it away. Uh, but he he talked about his son. He said his son his son was cool with him getting hundred sacks, but he said his son was like, all right, go get one thirty now, get one hundred thirty. So shout out to sons, man, because they will push you. They will sure test you too, but they they will push you. Uh, and that's in a good way. He said, okay, dad, go get 130 now. So, so shout out to his son. Um, he talked about Calais Campbell. He said Calais Campbell makes his job a lot easier. Cause he said, and he said he make, Calais Campbell makes everybody's job that much easier. Because he said Calais will have like two, three guys on him. So that allows him and whatever other pass rushers are out there on that, on that play, go get after it. So I, I appreciated that. Um, he was asked about... Staying after practice and whatnot with the young guys, like especially Adafi away. And he said he's just trying to teach them good habits. Trying to teach them muscle memory and whatnot. Just, just showing them the rope. Continuing to show them the ropes. Because we had heard about the stories and that, all that in training camp and whatnot. But cause it's, it's one thing when you do something once. Oh, okay, it's cool. That's nice. But if you continue to do that one thing that had been recognized by a lot of people as something that's great. If you continue to do that, that makes it even better. Uh, and then he also said that uh, all the quarterbacks in the league, all of them can run now. All of them. And he said they all have speed. And he said that practicing against Lamar Jackson, that certainly helps a lot. Now, another pass rusher uh, who they interviewed today, uh, well, well, who's had the press of the day, not really an interview, but whatever, was Adafi Away. Rookie Adafi Away. First round draft pick Adafi Away. Uh, Orlando Brown trade Adafi away. Shout out to the Chiefs. So um, he said that he's happy to be playing along somebody that has 100 sacks. He said he said it's crazy, but the way that he said it, he said it's crazy. And he said that um, they asked him, "Oh, how, how, how did you feel when he got his 100 sack?" He said, "Oh man, we we were all so excited about it with a straight face." Because again. Adafi, I remember this from his very first interview as a Raven. When he first drafted him, his first interview, and we talked about this before, family going crazy in the background. They yelling, they screaming, they celebrating, and they got every right to. But he just sitting down in the chair. Yeah, I'm happy to be a Raven. Yeah, I'm ready to just contribute to the team. I'm thankful for the opportunity that the Ravens have given me. Straight face, no, no excitement, no like, oh, well, yeah, no, no nonsense. Adafi away, don't play. Um, he uh, he also said that he wants to be a diverse pass rusher. Said he just doesn't want to rush from the edge. He said he doesn't mind being lined up inside. So I know that a, a lot of people had questioned, like, why why is Adafi away lined up in on in the interior of the defensive line? Like for what? And they're like, oh, Wink, what are you doing? And I mean, you can still question, well, well, Wink, what are you doing? But Adafi Away said he doesn't mind. He don't mind. Um, and, and he just wants to add, add more to his game. So whether he lined up outside, whether he lined up inside, he said he just he wants to be diverse. Doesn't want to just be a, a one-move type of guy. Wants a plethora uh, of moves to contribute um, to the pass rush. So that's, that's always a good thing. Remember, the more you can do. But at the same time, you also want to specialize in something, too. But anyway, we'll talk about that another day. Uh, they asked about him hitting a rookie wall. Has he hit the rookie wall? Because early on, we kept hearing his name over and over and over. And then it was like, hold up. What? Where's Adafi away? What's, what's, what's up with Adafi away? What's going on with him? It got quiet for a little bit, but he said they don't believe in a rookie wall. They don't believe in a rookie wall at all. Um, and he said that uh, everyone just has to raise their level uh, of play he also talked about always being in comp in competition with uh michael parsons from the cowboys right now uh he's leading michael parsons when it comes to pressures but michael parsons is leading him when it comes to sex uh, i remember justin houston during this presser he was asked about like what a die fair way uh like how did how does he feel about uh, he get, he's getting a lot of pressures which is great uh but not getting a sex and he said hey you just it's, it's football it's nfl you just got to keep going you got to keep going. You got to keep pushing. And it, it'll end up happening. So you never know when an opportunity is going to present itself. And Adafi Away, he talked about it. He, on uh, Justin Houston's 100 sack, Adafi Away, he said he thought he was actually going to be the one getting a sack. So it, that's just how it is sometimes, man. 
But anyway, um, this was a, a nice presser. Nice to hear from the guys uh, to see what's going on. Again, my favorite part was Mark Andrews. I told you he so this this let this lets me know. It showed me, in my opinion, that Mark Andrews, oh, hurry up offense, fast paced offense. Seemed like he'd be with that all day. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And we out.